Hi, this is Mark Meschel. I'm the Chicago Window Expert. My mission is to bring solar to Chicago. And now I've been lucky enough to be invited to see an actual PV array in its real life location in Richmond, California. Golden Gate Bridge is completely engulfed in a fog. This is the West County Wastewater District in Richmond, California. It's the largest photovoltaic power plant in the United States that uses two axis trackers so that the PV panels follow the sun for maximum power yield. This 1.1 megawatt solar plant uses 87 solar trackers to provide about one third of the water treatment plant's energy needs. So this is on a 75 kilowatt sat on inverter. And we'll get up close uh, there is an AC disconnect as a, as a circuit breaker um, in, the, in the AC panel. So um, in this case, here's where our 483 phase comes in to feed the mode to uh, very high resolution spring level monitoring. So they put in um, these fancy boxes uh, from Energy Recommerce, intelligent um, um, combiner box basically that is monitoring the power in each string and they're all networked together um, and then each, as you'll see over there, each, each group of trackers, each of the four installations is, has a uh, wireless network that all combines over this main one. All of the input from the, the six sensors in this system come into this programmable logic controller and um, those signals are interpreted, looked at. That when we say the tracker is moving, we're counting teeth moving by, and if not, generate an error code. In addition, um, I didn't bring one because I didn't want to get too techy on you today, but we plug in a little um, controller to yeah. the programmable logic controller, and we can perform manual operations on the tracker very easily. So we use that a lot for maintenance, diagnostics, um, and so forth. Additionally, with that handheld unit, which is a little, you know, couple hundred dollar Siemens product, you can uh, put in any time of the day and day of the year, the tracker will go to that position. The panel is sort of clamped to a little unistrut. It's a very simple, a very simple clamp. Uh, sliding down the edge of the panel, we're looking at a little bit of a crown in it. Panels are filthy at the moment, they're still producing. Very dirty. The big topic of discussion is how often do you have to clean these things. This particular facility has a contract for cleaning twice a year. SunTech is the manufacturer of the panel. ET has now gotten in the business, so they've got their own to offer henceforth. But this is the simple wiring that you would see between individual panels. One plug goes in, one plug goes out, and they accumulate somewhere. The discussion here is the foundation and the type of a tracker it's ballasted. This donut of concrete you're looking here, this disc I should say, is all you really need to support it and re resist all the wind loads involved. The engineer Gary explained that the hole in the middle of the panel is not to let the wind through, but just simply a function of the layout of the panel. Oh, it's moving. We have rotation. There's a guy here who's talking about a new type of inverter that's not an inverter at all. It uses inductance instead of capacitance. And uh, it's something to do with the term VARS, which I'm now going to have to learn. It seems to have to do with the amount of energy required to pump electricity through the wire. And here are the wires required to get that electricity out of the panel and to the grid. You know, could operate up to say 45 degree latitude, but practically speaking, probably about the 40 is about as far as go it's surprising how many panels are here. The road really clearly, and I was like, wow, that's not a very trackers, I should say. Here's the big set of humming boxes that you need. And they're just running these power conduits right on top of the ground, ganged up. And this pastoral scene shows you just how green solar energy is.
We've got geese living at the base of the solar collector. Each individual tracker is in four quadrants. Where one was partially shaded, which would knock out the power output of that one. There would still be the other three. Which Shading is very important in photovoltaics. If a, a panel is shaded, it's going to actually affect any other panels that it is interconnected with in a string if they're connected in series, kind of like a daisy chain. So therefore, you would want to space these things apart so that they don't shade each other. That being said, uh, nobody seems perturbed about the amount of bird guano all over these panels. And there are the birds responsible. This is the latest in solar inductance motors. It's a 14-prong Weberhusen. And you might notice when you look down this grouping that they're not exactly parallel to one another. And the engineer said he was a little bit concerned about that because each controller seemed to have its own mind. But uh, it turns out that they tolerate slight angulation. There are 87 trackers here at this site. Um, and that's what it takes apparently to make a nominally rated 1.1 megawatt facility.